let me just uh, let everyone know who you are. Anton Kensamal is an AI engineer at MobyDev, and he knows what's on the bleeding edge of AI and how to make it work. He's told us that he thinks that AI and machine learning are the surf for the ocean of data. And the one who understands these items are going to be is going to be the one who's riding on top of the wave. So with, with just a little um, uh, recognition of the Beach Boys and all of, all of the uh, surfing excitement they brought to an earlier generation, let me turn things over to Anton and ask you to, um, to share with us a little bit more about what you mean by that. So can you hear me now? Can you see the presentation? Yes, you're perfect. We're good. Thank you. So hi, everybody. Again, my name is Anton Kansamol, and I'm uh, one of the AI engineers in MobiDev. Here, me and my other fellow engineers uh, deal with AI problems of various complexity on a daily basis. As a company which aims to bring people's ideas into life, we have to be proficient in a wide range of tasks. Each one is unique and different, and often one is more difficult than the other. Have you ever wondered, how would your sofa look in red? Or maybe you took a great photo, but there is that one guy who was strolling across the view, and you want to remove them. Or have you ever tried blurring the background of your video call and wondered what kind of evil sorcery knows where the background is? All this cool stuff is powered by an AI technique called image segmentation. It allows you to find the exact shape and location of an object within an image. Furthermore, you can extend this task into a number of different problems. Namely, with semantic segmentation, you can separate an image into zones to differentiate wheat from corn on the satellite images of your crops, for example. Here in MobiDev, we have dealt with numerous cases of segmentation applications. Namely, once we had to remove backgrounds from the photos of cars and dealerships. Let us take a look at an example. So on the slide, we can see an example of a picture from the, uh, from the test that we were dealing with. And there is a car uh, within the dealership environment. And on the right is the same, the very same picture, but this is the information for the AI system where the car is and where the background is from which it learns to differentiate between the two and remove the background. So the model just learns where the background is and then using this information, we can remove the background. It's as simple as that. This is a case of a strongly supervised problem. This means that to train a model, you have to have a label for each of the training samples you have. A label is an answer to your input or the true result for it. The best possible scenario is when you have all your data labeled. Although the most uncommon one, it yields the best results as the engineer is able to understand the task better and to be more involved in the problem they are trying to solve. The same principle of strong supervision and with segmentation in particular, applies to many different tasks as well. Like automotive, for example. Uh, we have an example uh, here on the left where there is a picture from a camera of a vehicle. And then um, the different entities in, this, uh, in the picture are separated or they differentiated Within each, um, between each other with colors. So for example, people are colored in red, uh, the road itself is covered in uh, deep purple, the sidewalk is covered in magenta and so on and so forth. Uh, this is the information for the AI system where everything is and fr from which it learns. And the output of this would be that the vehicle is able to know where exactly are the people, where exactly is the road, so on and so forth. Or for example, in healthcare, uh, like on the picture on the right, we have a picture of a human eye under a microscope where we can see different uh, tree-like structure of um, vessels, of blood vessels. And the task is to keep all the blood vessels and to remove everything else and find all the blood vessels within the 
um, microscope image. So let's talk about weak supervision now. Remember looking for Waldo. I bet it took you a couple of hot chocolates on a cold evening. Now imagine not even knowing how he looks. Luckily, the things that you do have are some scenes where you know for sure that he is the that he's present, and somewhere he isn't. This is what we call weak supervision, when the labels are not dense and rather indirect. For example, you have some satellite imagery of your crops, like here on the left, for example. The harvest showed that your yield has been contaminated, and you want to know a particular area of the field to look for pollution or other problems. Or say you have a quality control system for solar panels, like here on the right, for example. You did some internal testing and you know that this particular one doesn't work. However, it is too expensive to have somebody look for a tiny crack, for example, but you want to find it, not to allow the same def defect in the future. Recently in Mobidev, uh, we had a chance to tackle the task of multiple instance learning. We had an enormous image, a whole slide image, a scan of a human tissue under a microscope. By saying an enormous one, I mean an image of size 100,000 by 100,000 pixels, which is about 4,800 normal full HD screens. Quite a haystack, huh? And we were looking for cells which are as small as 400 by 400 pixels. Imagine looking into a real pile for something that is 500 times thinner than a hair's breadth. This is, this is where we come to multiple instance learning, a simple technique of weekly supervised learning family. It is precisely for the situations where you know that there are, indeed is a needle in a haystack, but you do not know how it looks, and you have some healthy stacks to compare it with. Let's talk about unsupervised learning. So suppose you're a telecom company that wants to, re that wants to reduce its customer's churn rate by providing personalized call and data plans. The behavior of the customers is studied, and the model groups the customers with similar traits. You, in turn, create a plan for every cluster of customers so that everybody finds something comfortable for themselves. Or suppose you would like to detect anomalies in your data without any prior knowledge about them. Having a vast experience in machine learning, we have conducted an experiment using concrete crack data set. The goal was to create a model capable of recognizing images with defects and normal ones using unsupervised learning. This concrete solution would help roadworks and or different maintenance services. In the, in the use case we selected, we assume that image labels cannot be known in advance during training. So here we use clustering among others to classify if a sample contained a defect or not. These are cases when you know nothing about your data at all. It seems like so much can be done, right? Not at all. Your data still carries a lot of information. The problem is just that we are unable to tell which parts are useful for us. For example, a fully supervised system pays attention to the things it is taught to do and discards everything else. By contrast, an unsupervised clustering algorithm will just tell the difference between the things it sees. In other words, an unsupervised system is looking for a replacement for labels within the data itself. It's a pretty casual situation where you do not supervise the learning with labels. This is precisely the reason they call it unsupervised learning. As you can see, machine learning is only easy at the first glance. If you start digging deeper, it becomes increasingly difficult. But really, identifying the problem is the most important part of solving it. Nonetheless, as soon as you know what you are dealing with, you're very close to solving the problem. Thank you, Anton. I appreciate that. I saw, um, uh, it, as, as is often the case, it was certainly worth the wait to, uh, uh, to have your presentation despite uh, some challenges at the beginning, because I think taken in the context of everything that Andrew and Ihor uh, shared with us, it, it, it presents a, a a way to begin to consider machine learning, to, to consider AI and to consider blockchain as tools that will be used both in, 
you know, every science fiction movie we see and in real work happening in a, in a, uh, in an office uh, just down the street, even even as we speak, or even on my iPhone as I'm as I'm sitting here today. 